So, I've been dead for a little while, haven't I? But we're finally back, and we're gonna go ahead and continue this tutorial series of... So, what I'm gonna be showing you this time is how to actually shoot projectiles. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. So we want to start off by actually setting up a new scene, and we're going to add an area 2D. Then we're going to simply go ahead and actually select the area 2D, and we're going to rename it to Player Bullet. Then as a child of the Player Bullet, we're going to go ahead and add a Sprite node. As another child of the player bullet, we're gonna go ahead and add a collision shape 2D. And as another child, we're gonna add a visibility notifier 2D. Now with this, I'm gonna simply go ahead and save my scene, and I'm gonna save it into my player folder. And I'm, since I'm following Golda's styling guide, I'm making sure that I do name it with lower case. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to select my sprite node and I'm going to go down into my asset sprites and I'm going to select the bullet.png and I'm going to click and drag it into the texture field of my sprite node. And there we go, we actually have our sprite for our bullet. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to select my collision shape 2D, I'm going to go over to empty and I'm going to add a new circle shape 2D. And you can go ahead and reshape it or resize it, uh, but in this case I'm just going to leave it, that should work fine for me. And then you can also resize the visibility notifier, but it's fine, I'm just going to leave it. Now, with my player bullet selected, I'm going to go ahead and add a new script. And everything looks fine to me, the name, floor case, it's saved in the player scene, and it is empty, so go ahead and create it. And what I want to actually do in the script is I want to start off by actually setting up an export var. In this case, I'm calling it speed, and I'm setting it equal to 400. You can set it equal to whatever you want. Then I'm setting up my functions physics process delta, and I'm doing position plus equals transform dot x times my speed times my delta value. Then what I want to actually do is I want to actually set up some signals here. So I'm going to select my player bullet, go over to the node, and I'm going to add an area entered signal. So, and I'm going to connect it to the player bullet. Then I'm going to also add a body entered signal and also connect it to the player bullet. And inside these signal functions, what I'm going to do is just do Q3. And I also want to connect the signal for the visibility notifier. In this case, it's going to be screen exited, and I'm going to connect it to the player bullet as well. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do Q3. And basically, we're using the visibility notifier to actually check if our bullets go off screen. And if they do, they get destroyed. And if we actually run this locally, we should see our bullet moving. And we are. So it is working, surprisingly. <laughs> now, uh, we're going to actually go to our player scene. So go ahead and open up your player scene. And we're going to select my player. And what we want to actually do is we're going to add a couple nodes. In this case, we're going to add a position 2D. And we're going to actually rename that to be, um, I don't know, uh, Let's call it uh, fire. Actually, let's call it bullet fire. Um, that's a terrible. That's a terrible. If I can speak, that's a terrible name. But that's what we're gonna go with. And I'm simply adding a timer node as well. And I'm gonna rename this to fire rate. So I really don't like this name. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename it to Bullet Fire Loc for Fire Bullet Fire Location. I know it's still a terrible name, but that's what we're working with. So now in the actual script, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're actually gonna go ahead and add a new function. So in this case, I'm gonna add a new function, and I'm gonna actually call it. Uh, let's call it fire. So function fire and inside this function what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an if statement so if input that is action pressed and I actually don't have the action set up so I'm gonna go over to project, project settings, input map and then in the action I'm just gonna call it fire and then I'm gonna click this plus sign here and I'm gonna add a mouse button and it's that to left button so that should work just fine. And then in back in our script, we can just do fire in the parentheses and then do an can fire, which is a variable I actually haven't set up yet. So I'm gonna scroll up to the top and set up that variable. So var can fire is equal to true because the player should be able to fire immediately. Now, back in the if statement we were on, 
we're gonna go ahead and actually do an RPC ID call to the server. So since we're doing an RPC ID call to the server, we wanna set the first parameter to be one, and then the second parameter is the function we wanna call. In this case, I'm gonna name it, I don't know, something like player bullet. That should work. And then I wanna set up a function that the server's actually gonna call back to our client. So in this case, it's gonna be a sync function, and we're gonna just call it spawn bullet. And then it's going to be var bullet underscore instance is equal to, and I actually haven't set this up, so I'm going to scroll back up to the top and I'm going to set up a const variable. In this case, it's going to be const bullet is equal to preload, and it's the bullet scene that we made. So now back in our spawn bullet function, we're going to do uh, the bullet instance is equal to the bullet dot instance. And then we want to do git tree dot git root dot get node and we're getting the world and we do have to make sure that we actually spell it the exact same way we actually spelled it on the world scene and then we're doing dot add child bullet underscore instance and what we basically did there is we actually made sure that the bullet gets actually spawned into our game as a child of the world. You could add it as a child of the player but I'm just doing it for the world and then I scrolled back up to the top and I'm setting up a on ready var. In this case it's going to be an on ready var for my bullet fire location so I'm just going to call it bullet look and then I'm going to set it equal to dollar sign bullet fire location and I'm setting up another on ready var in this case it's going to be for my timer so on ready var fire rate is equal to dollar sign fire rate. Now back in my spawn bullet function, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to do bullet underscore instance dot transform is equal to my bullet underscore look dot global transform. And what that line does is basically sets the bullet position equal to the position of the bullet fire location. And now what we want to actually go ahead and do is we want to set up a signal for our timer. So under the signals, we're going to add a timeout signal to the player. Now what I actually want to do in this function is I want to set my campfire variable equal to true. And I just realized I forgot to set it as false in the first place when we're firing. So in the if statement where we're firing, we want to set the campfire equal to false and we want to start our timer. So fire rate that start. Then with our fire rate timer selected, we want to go over to inspector, set it up as one shot and the wait time is essentially gonna be controlling how fast we fire so in this case I'm gonna set it up to be 0.5 just to fire a little bit faster and you can set it up to be whatever you want this is what I'm using now let me actually explain how the code kind of works so when we're firing we're doing an RPC call to the server which is calling the player bullet function on the server the player bullet function on the server in turn is gonna do another RPC call back to our clients which is gonna call the spawn bullet function which is gonna spawn a bullet on all our clients now the last thing we want to do is we want to call the fire function and the if statement is network master in our in our physics process then that pretty much does it so i'm just going to copy the name here and then on our server side we want to go into our player scene and we want to set up that function that we're calling from the client so remote function player bullet and then we're doing an rpc call back to our clients and calling the spawn bullet function like i said earlier and that pretty much does it for our server now if we run everything and launch the game, everything should actually work. So if I move around and if I press the left mouse button, it is actually spawning the bullet, but for some reason it's actually destroying it. So um, let me actually go ahead and look into my code to see what the issue is because it is actually spawning the bullet. So let's see here. So let me go into my player bullet script and I think the reason it's doing that is because it's actually detecting the player as a body and since it's detecting the player as a body it's then in turn q freeing the bullet. So a way we can fix this is if we select our player we can make sure that our player is in a new group called player and if we have it in a group called player what we can do in the uh, bullet script is we can actually add this line of code here where if body dot is in group and we put the player in the player group so if body is in the player group then we want to do q3 and it actually should be if not body that is in player group 
and that should actually fix the one issue we had. Now if we actually fire our bullets, as you can see, they don't actually get destroyed now by actually colliding with the player. So th look at that, we have working projectiles now. Now we can't actually kill the enemies yet, and the enemies can't kill us. We'll do that in a future video. But for now, uh, this actually works, so we're good. Now, um, we're. I'm gonna actually change the color of the sprite while I'm at it. So I'm gonna select the bullet sprite, and I'm gonna go into self modulate, and I'm just gonna set it equal to I don't know a green color looks fine. And if I run everything, we should actually be able to shoot out green bullets now, and we do. So look at that. We have green bullets flying across that are actually working and like I said earlier you can't actually kill the enemies right now and the enemies can't actually kill you. We'll actually take care of that in a future video and we also have to set up proper collisions like for example maybe you don't want the enemies to collide with each other or you don't want the players to collide with each other. We'll take care of all of this in a future video. Anyway the github project will be down below in the description. And as always, if you like the video, make sure you leave a like and please consider subscribing as it definitely helps the channel out. Anyway, I'll see you guys later.